What's going on, y'all? My name is Damien, and on this YouTube channel, I basically talk about all things DevSecOps, cloud security, and offer advice in those two domains or in cybersecurity as a whole. And in today's video, I'm basically going to be going over a job pathway for becoming a cloud security engineer or describing it rather. So without further ado, let's just get straight into it. All right. So one thing I want to mention before we get started is this. If you don't use or haven't used draw.io, I highly recommend you use it. It is open source. It is free and it is a great tool to draw out architecture diagrams and all that good stuff. I used it for creating this diagram with jobs to help y'all get to becoming a cloud security engineer. So highly recommend using it. And now we'll go ahead and we'll get into the actual discussion. So first things first, I'm going to go over the entire pathway and then I'm going to dive into each role as we go along. All right. So. First things first is if you're a beginner in your career and you're trying to find your way into tech in some way, shape, form, or fashion, start out at desktop support. All right. Once you get desktop support, stay there for maybe about one or two years, then hop on over and see if you can become the systems admin. Right. And when you get there, maybe stay there for another two to three years, and then you can decide which route you want to go down. Right. But in this particular case, Assist admin, I believe, and this is based on my expertise and my research and stuff like that. You can go and become a cloud security engineer, or you can transition and then get a role as a cloud support specialist, right? Two different things, but there's quite a bit of overlap and I'll go into it in more detail. From a cloud support specialist, you can then transition and pivot into a cloud security analyst. And then from that cloud security analyst role or position, then you can pivot into becoming a cloud security engineer. With the cloud engineer, because you're probably going to be doing two in one, you're definitely going to have a much easier time pivoting and transitioning into a cloud security engineer, right? When it comes down to how long you should stay at these two roles, I'd say give or take maybe a max four years. And because the cloud is super duper immersive, so max four years here and then the max three years here and then boom, cloud security engineer. That's just how I see it. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dive into each one of these positions and roles so then we can talk about it. All right. So coming back up to desktop support or help desk. So if you're just starting in your career or you are trying to get into tech, this is the perfect place to start. Why is that? Well, when you get into this role, get this position, the top skills that you'll end up learning are number one, the operating system basics and how to troubleshoot them. So you'll learn a lot about windows and the nuances of windows, how to debug things and how to install software, how to remove them. What are some things that you look for? Uh, how to, you know, run commands in the command prompt or PowerShell. And you'll probably end up interacting with a lot of customers or a lot of people with Windows machines and some with Macs as well in your organization. So you'll learn a lot about the differences between the two. And that's always a good thing to know. The next thing is you'll definitely learn some networking fundamentals while you're in help desk. And that'll be mostly just like troubleshooting or debugging networking issues on the machines and maybe doing a little bit of imaging as well over the network, right? Using like SCCM or Numara or any of those like software or machine imaging solutions. And then the third thing is just, you also get to understand how to do some basic scripting, nothing too crazy. Like I said, command prompt, PowerShell scripts, you might end up writing a little bit of automation to do some magic on the back end. And those basic IT issues, right? Like understanding that sometimes you do need to reboot your machine because it's been running for a couple of days. So that cache needs to be cleared. Certain things like that. Key technologies to learn when you're in this role before you transition on to the next one, I would say Windows, Mac OS, and Linux with an emphasis on Linux. If it were me and I was working desktop support, I would install Linux and use it every day. 
And then when you look at certifications to help you get yourself ready for the next role, I would say come out of this role with the network plus so you understand how the network works and then also that security plus so that you get those security fundamentals before you move on to the next thing. All right. Next up, we got systems administrator. So for systems administrator, the thing that you'll end up doing a lot of is you've now elevated from debugging and troubleshooting individual machines and working on ticket queues and being more customer client facing because you're going to be, you were at one point in time working with people and communicating with a lot of different people in your company as a desktop support engineer or help desk. You're going to be managing servers. You're probably going to end up having to provision virtual machines or VDIs. You're probably going to end up having to manage Kubernetes clusters on those servers, on those servers and so many different other things, right? Most likely going to be working a lot with Active Directory, working closely with the network team, DNS, virtualization, containerization, a lot of those skills you'll end up learning as a sysadmin. I believe that the sysadmin is pretty much like the glue in a lot of different places. And it's a very, it's a role where you're going to be working cross-functionally quite a bit. And what I mean by cross-functional is you're going to be working with teams that are adjacent to what it is that you do and you depend and rely heavily on them. So sysadmins typically work a lot closely or very closely with network engineers and vice versa. And they also may work with desktop support engineers as well. There's a lot of cross-pollination going on in there. With that being the case, you also get to understand that you're going to be figuring out a lot of integration points between various systems too. So you might end up having the servers on-prem and you need to figure out how they can talk with other servers that are in the cloud somewhere, right? So in this particular case, this role in itself is going to pretty much expose you in so many different areas. So key technologies to learn, Docker, of course, you want to know containerization. You got to know Bash because you're probably going to be doing a little bit of automation or PowerShell if you're a Windows user. And then Kubernetes. Kubernetes is something that you definitely need to know and you definitely need to learn. And I think this is the perfect place to learn that. And certification considerations, Network Plus, Security Plus, of course. Your Security Plus, you may end up using it a lot more as a systems administrator as well as the knowledge that you get from your network plus, because it's all going to come together. And then depending on your exposure to the cloud, I would highly recommend getting an AWS certified cloud practitioner in this role or a GCP or an Azure equivalent to that certification. Okay. So after a system administrator, if you decide that you wanted to go the cloud support specialist route, then these were the type of skills that you would get out of it. So number one, it's going to be a customer facing role at some point. So you're going to be supporting a lot of different services. You're probably going to be working with a lot of different teams. And in this particular case, you're going to be setting up and managing a lot of those cloud services, right? So you think of serverless storage, networking, you may be the person that they put just for networking. So when you're in a cloud support specialist role, you may only be responsible for a specific domain. You're going to be heavily invested in the cloud. So you're going to get a lot of exposure to like IAM roles and users, S3 buckets, all of various different services. So it's a cloud intensive role and you most likely will end up having to automate some basic operations, right? And provision infrastructure automatically or write infrastructure as code and, you know, deploy those things. So Python, Bash, and Terraform might be your best friends at this point. And the reason why I say Bash is because in a lot of cases, you'll be interacting with a lot of Linux machines that are in the cloud. And then the last thing is you'll have to learn those cloud security basics, like minimizing the amount of misconfigurations that you would have, those types of things. You will have to know what it, is, what it may mean to harden the resources in a cloud to stop them from being compromised. So when you're in this role or when you're about to get into this role, there's two th key things that you're gonna end up learning a lot of. And that's not just the cloud, but Terraform and Python are going to be your best friends. And then certification wise, I would say Solutions Architect Associate or Google Cloud Associate Cloud Engineer or Microsoft AZ900. Those would be my certification recommendations. So Cloud Engineer, if you want to become a cloud engineer, 
then the key thing about this is you're going to be more on the heavy engineering side. So you're most likely going to be designing, implementing all types of frameworks in the cloud, right? You may also be responsible for securing them as well, but it may not necessarily be like your whole job, right? So design, implement, and implement scalable and fault tolerant and secure frameworks in the cloud. That's definitely something you're going to end up having to do. Your entire job is most likely going to be automating a lot, right? So automate, automate, automate infrastructure deployment. So you're probably going to be working a lot with Terraform, CloudFormation, Cloud Foundation, or whatever the Google Cloud term now is. You're going to be working with a lot of infrastructure. You're going to be automating a lot of different things. And you're most likely also going to be building out custom scripts and tools to help manage those deployments and also extend certain things within the cloud. So you may be working a lot with like AWS Lambda or serverless components in the cloud as well, which will require you to learn a programming language of some type. Hint, hint, Python. You're also going to be working with DevOps teams and building CICD pipelines, all that good jazz. So a cloud engineer is very, very hands-on. So for this particular job, Terraform, Git, any type of version control system, you definitely want to learn. Python, any CICD platforms. And one thing I did not mention here is containerization, Docker, and also Kubernetes will be a big thing here as well, because now most applications are being employed into somebody's cluster. So K8 is something you will really want to know. Certifications and considerations, solutions architect, AWS developer associate, and security specialty. This one, you're going to want pretty much all the associate exams on the AWS side or all of the, or all of the GCP or Azure equivalents, if you want to go in GCP land or Azure land. And then on top of that, I would say adding in a Kubernetes cert, like the CKA would also do you well here as well. So cloud engineer, you're learning quite a bit, but you're very, very hands-on and you will be working with different teams cross-functionally, but it's not going to be as customer facing or more of a support role. So for cloud security analyst role, this comes, I would say, and this is what I would recommend after the cloud support specialist role or support engineer is that you'll end up going more on the blue team side. So you're now putting on your investigation hat and you're really starting to understand how threats and vulnerabilities and all of that is created and monitored in the cloud, right? So you're pretty much going to be leveraging cloud native services and solutions or cloud security posture management systems, CSPMs and CNAPs of the world, like Wiz and Prisma Cloud, like look at those things and look at those, those threats and alert and action on them as well. So you're pretty much going to be triaging events and alerts and stuff for the cloud. And the good thing about this to particular role is that you start to get an idea of what the common security risks and threats are within your environment, but also within the cloud itself. And you get to dive deeper into it. So number one, number two, identifying those risks within the cloud and analyze those configurations of the resources. Identify what misconfigure mis identify what misconfigurations look like and what the common ones are, and then of course action on it. Right. So this is very defense. It's a very defensive role. It's not offensive, wherein you're going to actually try to break something or try to breach something. You're more or less like, this is what we need to do to defend things. Right. So any key technologies to learn, any CSPM, CNAPs, guard duty security command center, I think what Microsoft Defender for Cloud, like those type of things you want to get a really good handle on. And then when it comes down to certifications and considerations or certification considerations, any security certification, you're golden, right? So you definitely want to have a security specialty or the GCP professional cloud security engineer or go for the Microsoft SC 100. And again, this role an analyst type role. So you're going to be doing a lot of triaging events and alerts and stuff like that and actioning on it. So 
Now we're at the very end. When you look at a cloud security engineer, high level requirements, I will say just four key points. You're going to be building solutions and architecting cloud security solutions in the cloud. So you're probably going to be doing or creating detective, preventive, proactive, or corrective controls, addressing them. You're probably going to be working with various different types of teams cross-functionally. So you got to work with the cloud security analysts in the SOC. You got to work with application security. You got infrastructure over here. You got risk management and all these different teams over there. So you're pretty much like in a very interesting position as a cloud security engineer. Similar to the cloud engineering world, right? When I said automate, 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 that exact same concept applies as cloud security engineer, but you're really going to be automating a lot of security testing and compliance or creating custom solutions and controls within the cloud, right? So there's going to be a lot of automation in this role. And the fourth thing would be is that I will say is K8 is really, really important in this role. Why is that? Because you're going to end up having to secure it at some point. So you have to learn how to secure the clusters and the serverless components in the cloud. And all that kind of falls underneath your purview. Now, how you do it, whether you write some custom for it or you have some shiny tool like Wiz to do it, it's entirely up to you and, of course, to the organization that you work for and what their risk tolerance is and all that stuff like that. All that you'll take into consideration when you get there. But when you get to this point, just know that you're going to be doing a lot of automation, but from a security standpoint. And certification considerations, I didn't list out key technologies or whatnot because all the technologies that we listed from the top on the way down, you'll end up leveraging all of them and all of that knowledge here. But certification wise, this is where you start getting into the professional certification. So think the solutions architect professional, the DevOps professional, you got the GCP professional cloud architect or the professional DevOps engineer. And then with Microsoft, you have the AZ305 or the AZ400. And by this point, you should already have the security certifications in the cloud so that you can have an easier time pivoting into cloud security engineering. But also, you're going to want to expand your horizons a little bit on the professional side from an architecture standpoint, because it's going to demand you to have that mindset. And some of the certifications that I've listed here are more on the professional architect or like high level certifications. So just something to keep in mind. And that wraps up this video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you were able to learn something today. Just one word of advice. Everything that I've done and I've talked about is based on my own research. Don't take my word as the gospel. Always do your own research. It is your career. I'm just trying to give you guys some of the knowledge and experience and expertise that I've gained over the years and also based on my research. So. If you found this video helpful at all, please make sure you like, subscribe, and share with your friends who you think might also want to become a cloud security engineer someday and is interested in transitioning into tech. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate your time. Thank you for supporting the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.